Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to the Zozones. My name is TheAwesomeJ34 and I am going back to my old recording software for a little bit, so... Wunderbar. My voice should not be crackly and evil because NVIDIA is being a crack turd. But that's beside the point. Anyways, today we are looking at the new naval battle testing stage that Gaishin has just released. Or, not released, but said that they are going to release. It's going to happen tomorrow for me, about the exact same time this is being recorded. So that's fun. I should probably have a video up on that. Anyways, this is essentially just them saying that, hey, we're, we've done things. It should work better now. Here's a few of the screenshots. I think they look kind of pretty. And by kind of pretty, I mean really pretty. I just kind of circled back. Anyways, here's a little schedule. So Saturday the 10th, the 11th, and the 12th. On the 10th, it will be from on the... It'll be at 1700 GMT to 2100 GMT. Um, and then on the 11th, it'll be from 0100 GMT to 0500 GMT to 1700 and 2100 GMT as well. And then on the Monday, it will be 0100 GMT to 0500 GMT. And then you could download the dev server launcher, which is the first they've had in a long time, because before, the previous time that they ever gave a link to download the dev server was all the way back in patch 1.37 for testing the d dev server for 1.39. That's pretty crazy. Anyways, a um, little disclaimer here, you basically can't do the dev server test if you're not on the uh, PC version because the PS4 and the Mac OS platform don't actually have dev server um, launchers on them that you can download or the dev server just doesn't work with Mac OS and PlayStation just doesn't have a dev server launcher. Um, testing will be conducted on a dev server and only members of the naval CBT will have access to this so no. If, if you don't, too bad. Don't get your, don't get your hype going. Anyways, um, you may download the test line in advance, be testing new features immediately after the start of the test, and you can only participate in the testing from no more than two PCs. That made a little bit sense in my head, but it didn't really make sense out loud. I hope you get what I mean, because I'm not going to go over it. Anyways, I'm going to go over the new kind of things that they're adding. So, it has moved into the full head, and they would like to give you some new changes that they have been indicating earlier. Anyways, they're trying a new vessel type, the destroyers, on the new ice fields location, in which they will have two destroyers available, the Soviet 7-U type and the British tribal class destroyer, along with torpedo boats and aircraft. Um, the new test map is going to be really big. It's dozens of kilometers wide, so that's fun. Um, looks pretty cool, if you can see by these screenshots here. And your primary mission is to just destroy the cargo ships. We've already had a mission like this before in the past, so, I mean, that's fun. Um, destroyers can basically fire across the map. However, shooting from long distance may lead to wasting ammunition, so get closer. Um, torpedo boats um, basically get up close and personal and just d dank memes. They're kind of like the light tanks of ships, and we have... Heavy tanks and light tanks, basically. And then we have some torpedo boats that are kind of less memey and more slow and probably the medium tank class. Anyways, um, let's go over the new mechanics now. Um, first things first, I forgot to say that you will not have to spend spawn points for using the vessels. So that's fun. But um, bombers and torpedo bombers will require a lot of SP, so spawn points do exist. Someone left my Discord server. Oh, I know. I was talking to a friend earlier. Oh, well, that's beside the point. Anyways, so we have a new kind of looksy thingy here, in which basically you have your engine here, and you have your throttle here, you have your speed here, um, torpedo. These, these are like your status indicators. If your engine's damaged, if your torpedo's damaged, if your cannon breach is damaged, if your guessing torpedo launching systems damage. I don't know what that is. This will tell you if it's on fire. If you're on fire when it's lit up and this is your buoyancy. Um, I will go back into that a bit later. And then you have these four things, which kind of... I'll go into that later, too. And then you have this little section. This tells you if you're heading left or right. 
basically this is your rudder. Right, so basically, um, buoyancy has been added, aka kind of damage model-y thing, along with fire. So now, so now you will have to control the fires that are on your ship. Before it was previously just you're lit on fire, and it kind of just you're lit on fire. You can't really do anything about it. Now you actually have to like do the ground forces thing where you have to press six or G or whatever you have it. Probably six. And uh, that'll control the... Well, that will control and put out the fire. Um, you also have um, the buoyancy thing. As you can see here, he has, has a hole in the side of the ship um, in which your buoyancy is now going down. Your ship's buoyancy will keep decreasing unless you repair the hole in the side of the ship, and you can do that by pressing either seven or eight. It's one of the two. I don't actually know. Um, I'll tell you in the video tomorrow, when I actually have a video on this, assuming I have time. Um, you actually have, like, you know, armor models now that you can look at, so that's fun. And then you have munition storage and other the things. Um, going back up here, um, I'm kind of losing my train of thought. Right, gunners. So, from now on, on destroyers... All the main guns will be controlled by you and your mouse, but all the tiny flat guns and other such like that will be controlled by AI. And as far as I'm concerned, these are the uh, kind of things that can be happening for your gunners. So you can have your gunners shoot at other ships, um, ships and aircraft, aircraft, or just not fire at all. I think that's pretty cool. And then, um, okay, sure, Gaijin. And then this down here is pretty explanatory. It's how many crew you have left in your ship. Speaking of crew, it is now to a stage where if a certain chunk of your ship gets hit, it will basically knock out um, a lot of the crew members, if not all of the crew members, in the uh, area that has been hit. That makes it easier to kill people. And then you also have a new torpedo site being added. Previously, you could just... It kind of looks like... Okay. I should probably not delve into two subjects at once. Previously, you had a kind of locked torpedo on all the torpedo boats and stuff. And what you essentially had with that is if you aimed... You could aim some torpedoes. Like, if you had on one of the PT boats... That America had in the closed beta testing weird stage thingy. It had, a tor it had two por <laughs> it had two torpedoes on the front in which you could aim directly in front of your ship to fire both of them. However, we didn't have any torpedo launchers that actually moved. The unit destroyers do have torpedo launchers that move. So now you can kind of aim where your torpedoes are going to go, as you can see in these screenshots here. So that's fun. And then you can see a torpedo hitting. Yeah, that's, that's good. And then it gives you a little tutorial on how to effectively use HE and AP rounds. AP rounds are more of use for hitting more like the bottom of the ship and knocking out like the motors and components. Whilst HE rounds are do, do more damage on the upper half of the ship where there's less armor. Or if like you want to knock out crew and stuff. So yeah, I will be back with another video on this topic um, eventually TM which is probably tomorrow from this video being put up. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like down below. It encourage me to keep making this stuff. If you're new to the channel, you can subscribe. You can dislike the video. I don't really care at this point.